Hello guys, this is Yaroslav from Gateway IT and today I'm going to show you how to install Debian 10 VM on the FreeNAS. In this video, I will go over a few things. How to create a new VM, how to download Debian ISO from the terminal, in case your FreeNAS is at the remote location, like mine is, and how to fix the boot and networking issues after Debian VM is installed. If you'd like to support our channel, please follow us on library or consider making a donation with a BET token via the Brave browser. Thank you and let's get on with the video. So first of all, open your FreeNAS web interface and go to virtual machines section. Then naturally hit the add button, go with the VM option, for the operating system choose Linux, give it some kind of a meaningful name Please keep in mind that hyphens and spaces are not allowed in here. Leave boot method as UEFI. If you want your VM to automatically start with the free NAS, leave this box on. If you don't, remove it. Definitely enable VNC and bind it to your management interface. Click Next. Assign the appropriate amount of cores and memory in here. In my case, I'll go with one core and one gig of RAM. Click Next. Create a new Z volume here. Choose the vert IO driver, because in my experience, it works the best. I'll leave it at 10 gig for the demo purposes, it's plenty. And select the path where you want your Z volume to be. In my case, I'll just leave it at the root of my pool. Click next. As for the network interface, I'll leave the Intel option in here. Change the MAC address if you have any conflicts on your network and use the appropriate network interface. VLAN 1 in my case, because it's my DMZ network. Click Next. Now the installation media section. You have two options. Option 1 is to download the Debian ISO to your own machine and then upload it to the FreeNAS share. And the option 2 would be to directly download Debian ISO onto your FreeNAS. You can probably figure out option 1 on your own. So I'll show you the option 2. Right click on the shell and open it in a new tab. Now CD to the folder where you want to keep your Debian ISO and start downloading it by executing the next command. Hit enter and off you go. Because I already have the ISO downloaded, I'm gonna skip this step. But this can be very handy if you're managing a remote box and you need to install some kind of VM on it. After our ISO is downloaded, let's point the wizard to its location. Then click Next and Submit. Before you start the VM, there are some changes we need to do in order for it to function properly. Find the VM you just created, click Options, Devices. Find the VNC section and click Edit. First of all, change the resolution to 800 by 600. Otherwise, our Debian VM wouldn't even start. And secondly, remove the option to delay VM until VNC connects. Otherwise, you're going to have to log into the VNC interface every time the VM is restarted. Also, you want to make sure that you bind your VNC service to the correct network interface, which in my case it is. Hit save, go back to the virtual machine section and click on the switch to start the VM. Give it a few moments to spin up, then go to options, VNC. At this point, just install the Debian VM as you would normally do it. After the VM is installed, go back to the FreeNAS web interface and shut down our newly created virtual machine. The version of FreeNAS I'm using has a bug with displaying if virtual machine is running or not. 
So just refresh the page if you already flipped the switch. Go to VM Options, Devices, and remove the CD-ROM. Go back to Virtual Machine's web interface and start our Debian VM. Give it a few moments to load up and start VNC. As you can see, our VM didn't start up because there is a specific bug to Debian and Beehive. So basically, Beehive does not detect prop bootloader automatically that was installed by Debian. But we're going to fix that once we are inside the Debian VM. When you're presented with this shell, type in exit. Go to Boot Maintenance Manager. Boot from File. Go inside your volume, EFI, Debian, and start grub x64.efi. Let's log in. First of all, check if you have any network connectivity. You can do so by running IP space A. And in fact, we don't. This is due to another bug with Beehive on FreeNAS. Sometimes it's going to change the network interface name on its own across the VM reboots. So we are going to fix that now along with the bootloader error. First of all, let's get our network interface up and running. All of the commands I'm executing in this video are going to be available in the video description. Let's memorize our network interface name. In my case, it's ENP0S4. Now execute nano, etc. network interfaces. We have to change this S5 to S4. Exit and save the document. Now execute systemctl, restart networking, to reload the network configuration. After it's restarted, run DHCP client to get the IP address from your router. After that's been executed, run IPA again. So at this point, our network is up and running. And now we want to make sure that our network interface goes up automatically every time the VM is restarted. To achieve that, we need to install Network Manager. Unlike static configuration, Network Manager will automatically detect your active network interface and will activate the connection. But in order for it to take over the networking, we need to remove our network interface from the static network configuration file. So go to nano, etc. network interfaces, and either delete or comment out last two lines of this configuration file. Save and exit. Okay, now when this is done, let's get back to our EFI shell issue. As I said before, Beehive is unable to boot up the Debian VM because it cannot find the EFI configuration at the default location. In order to fix that, create a new folder inside boot EFI. Now let's copy our grub x64 EFI into that folder and change its name to boot x64.efi. That way, Beehive will know which file to boot from. Please keep in mind that you'll have to execute this last command every time you have a kernel update. So it's going to be a good practice to set up a cron job that will run once a day or on the system startup. Now when this is all done, let's power off the VM and check if the configuration works. As you can see, our VM is turned off, so let's turn it back on. As usual, give it a few moments to load up and open up a VNC console. So our Debian VM is in fact running and we successfully fixed the EFI shell issue. Now let's check if network connection is up and running.
and from the first look at it, it seems to be running. Let's ping Google. And our network connection, in fact, is functioning. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.